scene. Uh, in my book, um, demons and magicians are in an unholy alliance, <laughs> in that uh, magicians call up demons and receive whatever they want, such as, you know, power to change the weather, beauty, riches, being inexplicably famous, which explains, like, Nicolas Cage, for, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in return for that, they let out the demons so that the demons can mark other people and eventually possess them, which is nice for the demons, they like it. And uh, against this uh, array of magicians and demons are uh, Nick, uh, my hero, his brother Alan, and their mom, who are on the run uh, after a really bad breakup between Nick's mother and the evilest magician of them all. You know how things go wrong, you never call, you answer your sister, suddenly ravens of death are after you. <laughs> and Nick fights the whole thing. It was incredibly embarrassing and horribly life-threatening. And he really only cares about his brother. But then, in the spookiest city of all England, Exeter, you guys have heard me talk about that before, he meets a young lady with pink hair and a young gentleman with a demon's mark, and they get wrapped up into even more complications which makes Nick suspect that his older brother, Alan, who's sweet, kind, bookish, a compulsive liar, and a crack shot, <laughs> uh, is telling him lies, which he really hadn't anticipated. So he's mad at literally everyone in the world, and they've just come away from a house full of possessed people, which did nothing to improve anybody's day. And at this point, uh, you know, the book's got plenty of action in it, and it's got some romance. Uh, although not as much as book two, my rule with trilogies is book one, set up. Book two, make out. Book three, defeat evil. <laughs> All trilogies follow this rule, including The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Holly's trilogy certainly follows that rule because I have read Red Glove, and every time she was stuck, I knew, I knew what to put in. <laughs> anyway, uh, but having read the first book, my editor was like, so, this book, it's alright. I was like, thanks. She's like, but there's this thing you may not have heard of called the Twilight Clause. And it means you're going to have to add just a little more romance, Sarah. So I thought to myself, what is really sexy? What is H-O-T-T-T-T? And my answer, of course, was seasickness. <laughs> so, that was when the skipper, sexy <laughs> That's been the least sexy word ever. <laughs> What do you have against skippers? I can see a skipper in a romance novel. The skipper's dashing voyage. <laughs> the dashing skipper's voyage. Many variations. <laughs> that was when the skipper, a man with the close-clipped hair and charcoal-colored suit of a businessman and the worn teeth and yellow tongue of a necromancer, <laughs> also very hot, <laughs> gestured them aboard. The herbs Maris had given Nick were already making him feel a little dizzy, but that was almost a relief. His dread of coming aboard and his fury at his brother both felt distant, wrapped up safe until he could deal with them. Soon he would be back on land, and he would know all Alan's secrets. For now, he could only stagger down the steps to reach the bedroom below deck, his hand fumbling at the doorknob. The room was circular at one end, the bed white and plain, with cuffs at each corner. <laughs> So that was how they were transported the possessed. <clears throat> Nick went and lay back on the bed. Thankfully, he did not have to keep his feet any longer. He stared up at the wooden ceiling and heard May come in and shut the door. You don't need to use the restraints, Nick told the ceiling. I'll be good. May laughed. But I was planning to do terrible things to you once I had you at my mercy. Oh, said Nick. In that case, go right ahead. <laughs> no, you've spoiled the moment now. Yeah, Nick muttered. I do that a lot. So many girls would start off looking at him all shiny-eyed and breathless, and then they'd all been dis disillusioned. Most had ended up scared. May had already been around longer than any of the other girls, and she didn't scare easily, but of course it wasn't like that between them. Nick, May said, and hesitated. It was rare enough for her to hesitate that Nick was intrigued. He levered himself up in his elbows and looked at her. She had her back up against the door, her pink hair mussed by the wind, and her cheeks flushed which could have been another effect of the wind. I was wondering, May continued, that girl at the market, are you going out with her? No, said Nick. He really didn't have much else to say, but she was staring at the floor and then he embarrassed, so he went on. I've never really gone out with anyone. They've never particularly bothered him either. A night or two with a girl, and then having her go away and the next one come along. Always seemed like an alright way to do things. 
Nick was surprised she'd asked, not by the directness of it, because that was her style, but he was surprised she'd wanted to know. Since she had, it must mean that she preferred Nick. And if she really did? May's eyebrows had come up. She was smiling a bit. Oh, really? She said, her voice amused and incredulous. A complete innocent, are you? Definitely. <laughs> Nick assured her. You can try corrupting me if you like. May dimpled. It's no fun if you're asking for it. No, no, drawled. Release me, you monster. Your wicked ways shock me to my soul. And yet, I find you strangely attractive. <laughs> <laughs> the boat purred into life, lurching away from the dock and swaying between one wave and the next. Nick shut his eyes in a brief flash of nausea. I feel I should warn you, he said after a moment. I may be about to get sick or pass out. <laughs> uh, May said. Sexy? <laughs> <laughs> I knew my editor loved that. <laughs> Happy reading.